If you're not charging enough money for your MSP services, it's actually costing you money. And you're probably thinking, well, Harrison, I've added a bunch of new clients and I think my profit margins are pretty healthy. You're probably not charging enough. And if you know that you're not charging enough, you might not even be aware of the consequences of your actions. I'll be explaining this throughout the entire video and how charging more is actually going to make you obviously more money but if you charge too little, you're gonna end up losing money in ways that you don't actually think. And I'm gonna provide you with actionable advice to go help fix this problem. My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment. I think it's pretty cool. It is just before the holiday season. So before I get into today's video, number one, get in the giveaway. This is gonna be the last video I mentioned the giveaway because by the time I record the next one, that's gonna be closed. So go get in the giveaway. It is all the tools that a MSP salesperson needs to go grow their business. I've also partnered up with a company called Billways. They make billing for MSPs significantly easier from time tracking to billing for different hourly rates. It is a super, super cool platform and they're throwing in, not only do they throw in a backpack and an and a SSD, but they're also throwing in two annual licenses for the winners of the giveaway. So don't miss out on that. Number two, there is a new, slightly updated version of the masterclass. It's not the full one, but if you wanna go check it out, there is a link down below. Go through that masterclass. It is a bit more polished up. I like it a good bit more. It's I trimmed it down to about 40 minutes of just pure value to go through. And last but not least, if you're interested in growing your business through the next year, I'm hosting an MSP Launchpad it is a steal of a deal. There's tons of giveaways inside of there that come with the entire thing. There's a link down below. You're not going to want to miss that. I promise you on that one. So let's talk about five reasons why you don't want to charge too little money for your MSP. Number one, and this is probably the one that hits it hardest, is by you undervaluing your MSP, or at least your cost for goods or services for your MSP, there's a major, major problem, and it is a misconception of the client. While you will win more proposals, undoubtedly, there's a major problem with undervaluing. The problem is those customers that you're gonna be attracting at your lower price points are not gonna be as interested as somebody else might be if you were to charge more money. Think about it this way. Think of how many products and goods there are in a Dollar General or any local dollar store you have near you. 99 cents, I know inflation is like $1.25, $1.50 now, but if you've ever gone to those stores, they're just full of most of the time, kind of junk. Some of it's okay, but most of it's kind of junk. And it attracts a very certain buyer. Now, there's nothing against those people. But the problem is, is when you sell your services, which is tied to somebody's time, usually the business owners in the beginning, and then as you employ people, it'll change. But the major, major problem with that is, is as time goes on and you keep undervaluing your services, it becomes harder and harder to cover your costs and also your clients expect cheap and that's the hardest problem to get over is as time goes on and you consistently undervalue your services over and over and over again you're going to be getting these clients that are going to give you pushback on every single thing because they don't value what an MSP is actually capable of versus selling to clients that would love to have a more premium version, hand-holding, white-gloved, who are willing to pay significantly more money for arguably the same service, but a little bit more professionalism. And most of the time, the value and the money that people are spending is directly tied to the value that they get. So the money that they're spending is tied to that value. Sorry if I made that a little confusing. So when you're going out with clients and you're starting to sell services, you have to keep in mind, most people perceive that what they spend is directly tied to the value that they're getting. So companies that's, that charge less money, their clients expect not necessarily less, in most cases they expect the same, 
But because of that, they think they might not value you appropriately. And because they don't value you, they're not going to treat you, your team, your employees, the entire process the same way you would if they were a larger company or valued true MSP services. And before anyone says, Harrison, I can't find those clients, I promise you, you're just doing your prospecting and your sales wrong. They are everywhere there are plenty of people that value this everywhere and if you don't think that you can find these clients think of how many people have louis vuitton bags or mez bags anything like that it's just a bag it does the exact same thing but people are willing to pay a massive massive premium for a luxury brand that does the exact same thing as somebody else it's just a different buyer when you go into a louis vuitton store some of some people might look at prices or as some people might look at prices, but the vast majority are not there to give a hard time or think, oh my God, is this going to be my next paycheck? No, it is just an assumed you have the money for it if you're already there buying it. That's going to be the big, big difference. I know that there's a bit of a difference between retail and services, but you have to start thinking because too many of you guys are self-sabotaging saying, I can't find these people. I promise you, you exist. You're just not putting in the sales activities enough. Number two, and you probably already guessed this, but you reduce your profit margins and you limit your growth potential. Every business needs money to grow. I don't care what business it is. Even if it's a business that you're like, hey, I'm gonna go do lawn care and I have a lawnmower in my backyard, you still gotta put fuel in it. And at some point, like many of us, you will probably go through the owner-operator phase where you might not have a team to building that team. And guess what helps you build that team? Capital, cash, money. This is vital to your success. If you don't have money to grow, you're setting yourself up for failure. So by charging too little, you might win all of the deals. You might say, I have all of these clients. And at the end of the day, they're not profitable. That is something that is not only horrible to see from my aspect, but two, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to hire staff. You just created a new job for yourself. You could have just continued working the job that you had previously. Only when you charge enough and you actually have enough money coming in, you can grow, you can scale. And there's a massive benefit to customers as well. You're gonna be able to grow, but you're gonna be able to hire talent experts and additional personnel to help fulfill those customers needs which gives you more time to work on the business instead of working in the business there's a major major difference there so as you go through this entire process think about am i charging enough if you're charging less than at least at the bare minimum a hundred dollars location dependent but especially in the united states if you're charging less than a hundred dollars per user it is going to be so challenging to grow. You will, but you are gonna suffer what I'm gonna bring up in the third bullet. Number three is gonna be overcommitment and burnout. By you not charging enough money, you might add staff over time, which is great. But the major problem is you're going to have burnout and staffing issues. Staffing issues, one, because you might not make enough money to pay the best employees that you can hire. You might hire some of what you think might be a great employee at a great price. But if you could have the best employee at a fantastic price, why wouldn't you? Most of the time, and there was a study done, and I forget what book it was, but if I do recall it, I'll leave a comment down below. But there was actually a study done that if you can hire, you have A, you have A class, B class, and C class employees. C-class is people that you could probably deal without, but they do help the business in one way or another. B-class are your workhorses. They're going to make up like most of your business. And then you have your A-class, the absolute creme de la creme. The craziest part is if you were to pay them all the same, you're going to lose the A-class and the C-class is going to be super happy. The B-class will just be, hey, this is, you know, another job for the course. To get the best employees it's usually only about 20% more. So if you're hiring somebody for $50,000 a year, it's only $10,000 more, $60,000. You're, that person's gonna beat out everyone else in compensation. You don't have to tell anybody, but if they are a true rock star that you couldn't live without, it's only $10,000 more. But if you're not charging enough, you're going to have a hard time hiring that A-class talent and B, 
you're going to have a very hard time keeping people because they're going to get burned out. You brought on too many clients without enough resources to pay these people. Most employees do not mind working a ridiculous amount if they're compensated correctly. Now, that varies tremendously, but hiring those A-class people that are outworking everybody else, they're just the dream employee, they're so good, they only cost about 20% more than your average employee, which might be a B-class. C-classes, they're just going to fall, come in, they might leave after some time, you could probably live without them, but B-classes are going to be your, your bread and butter, which is most of your employees. To get that additional, it's only 20%. It sounds like a lot of money, but if you're charging appropriately, it becomes a heck of a lot easier to hire those people regularly. Number four, if you've heard me talk about it, I'm sure you probably have, or I've mentioned it in another video, is scaling. Without capital, you don't have the ability to scale. You don't have the ability to hire employees. You don't have the ability to market correctly. You don't have the ability to hire the right people outside of your organization to help you grow. I'm not just talking about sales and marketing resources. You have accountants, they gotta get paid. You have to do your taxes. But on top of that, a good accountant worth its weight in gold. They'll tell you where you're losing money, where you could grow. On top of that, lawyers protecting yourself, super important. You have to have an appropriate lawyer, preferably at your disposal, not at all the time, but helping you write your legal paperwork, making sure you don't leave any loopholes in there. And it's just good to have a good quality person on the back end. And if you're thinking, well, Harrison, that's only two. Trust me, the list goes on and on. By having more money, you get to have a nicer building, charging appropriately. Your team becomes happier. You have the ability to hire additional people outside your organizations, executive coaches, MSP mentor minutes for additional training. The list realistically goes on and on. Maybe even insurance. You can afford a bit better insurance for you and your employees keeping them happier, but too, if something really does happen, you know that they're not going to be burdened completely because you were able to grow, scale, charge enough, and help those employees out. Having that capital is only going to increase the amount of opportunities you have with growth. That could be your team, that could be your knowledge base, that could just consistently go on and on and on. There's really no limitation there, but without charging enough, that all can't happen. You have to charge an appropriate amount. And number five, this makes me cringe. And the difference is, is not getting the right components. Now, I'm not just talking about computer components. You might find lower end clients, they're gonna give you a hard time with every single thing they buy. I've been there before, it is a miserable, miserable process. You have to justify every purchase and explain it in great detail. But the clients that are really, really good, you're like, hey, by the way, we talked with you know Revit, Practice Panther, whatever it is. This is the computer that you or your team needs. Cost $1,500 a computer. Sound fair enough? Great. And they're just going to sign. But you might have another company who didn't, you know, you might have undersold, you didn't charge enough. And then they look at it and go, I'm not paying $1,500. I can get it right here on Amazon for $900. They don't know that they're going to have to be the ones responsible for doing warranty work, dealing with all those issues. They might have not bought the right computer. They might have bought secondhand. The list of opportunities goes on and on for massive, massive failure. And it gets even worse. If you don't charge enough, you can then end up not getting the best software that makes your life easier, the best tools that make your life easier, the best coaches that make your life easier. Everything scales down in the wrong direction. It doesn't give you the opportunity to have the best of the best to provide a true, incredible service experience to your customers. So now that I've given you five reasons why you have to charge more, let's talk about actually how to go charge more because a lot of people think that this is some crazy thing that I keep talking about. Oh, I can't charge more. Yes, you can. Here are some quick little tips and tricks to help you charge more money for your business. Before that, go take a sip of coffee. And while I take my sip of coffee, I would really appreciate it if you've made it this far in the video to hit the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. First, get sales training. It is the easiest way to charge more money. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but learning an appropriate sales process that you can follow over and over and over and over again makes life a million times easier. You learn how to handle objections. You learn how to handle 
awkward conflicts. You learn how to talk about money. All of these are really, really important for growing your business. Without proper sales training, you're gonna be like the rest of them. Investing in proper sales training is the most important. Number two, everything you do isn't about branding, but it's about building trust. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. If you're not following that sequence of people knowing you, liking you, and trusting you, you're missing out. Think about it. You go to the local place, you know, maybe your local mechanic, you're like, I've never been here before. It's kind of a weird experience. You're like, I don't know if they're going to do a good job. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you go to somebody that you know already, and you, you know, you keep hearing from other people, these testimonials from everybody else, maybe some case studies, you go in there, it's nice, buttoned up, very professional. All of a sudden, you're like, these guys are professionals. They might do the exact same job, but you as the consumer feel better. You feel better about giving them money and you're willing to get charged a little bit more to have a better experience overall. That's going to be the main difference. So investing in those resources, whether it's a website, professional marketing material, building content around that, and really building that know, like, and trust, you now give yourself the ability to charge more. You might've gone through a first meeting and the customer was like, I don't know, can you send me some information on that? Well, what kind of information? You go back, you make that information, you make it look professional, you hire a designer to make it look really, really good, and you use that over and over and over again. Case studies, rock solid. Testimonials, especially if they're video testimonials, chef's kiss, they are the best way, especially when you might not know anybody in their sphere of influence, their friends, their LinkedIn connections, anything like that. This is going to give you a huge, huge step up for you. So sales training, that professional experience are the first two. The third one is actually going to surprise you, but be in a good mood. The amount of people I have seen lose deals. I have seen people go through a sales meeting before me and they look miserable. I talked about it in a previous video. Haircut, clean shaven, feel good, feel confident, and smile. When you do, people are going to start to perceive you as a pleasurable person to be around. And I have won deals where we have either charged more money or didn't come in with the exact same service stack because they liked me more. It sounds absurd, but people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if they know, like, and trust you, they're going to feel much more confident in giving you a bit more money than the next guy just because they get a better feeling that you're going to do a good job. It sounds crazy, but it's just like going to a restaurant. We eat with our eyes first. If somebody gave you a slop of food and you're like, this isn't, this looks horrible, you might have to, you might put a little bit on your fork and taste it and you're like, oh, okay, this is actually pretty good. But you might look at a meal and you're like, this looks like it came from Gordon Ramsay. You're going to think, oh my God, this is going to be fantastic. Even if the food's not that good. Car sales is the same way. It goes over and over and over again. When you buy a house, they get professional pictures made for this exact reason. They want you to see it first in its truest beauty. When you get there, you might be misconceived. But that's okay. At least they got you in the door. They're going to build, you build up that know, like, and trust, and sales become much, much, much easier. So I hope this video helps. I'll let you take a moment again for a like, a subscribe, little notification bell. Don't miss out on the giveaway. This is the last video that I'm going to be doing about it. I hope you get in there. I'd love to see you win. Number two, check out the masterclass. It just got a bit of a tune up here. It is down in the links down below. And number three, if you're interested in that boot camp, there's another link down there as well. I appreciate you guys. And there's a bunch of like super helpful links down below as well. Go check those out. I don't put them there for my health. I put them there to help you succeed, to help you charge more money, to help you scale your business, and to help you grow. I'll see you guys later. Love you guys.